a lot of people don't want to be Christian because they don't see the Christian life as fun. And then there's other Christians out there that um, want to have fun and they have fun, but they're actually lukewarm. And then there's the other category of Christians out there that never have fun and they're actually religious. So I want to just break all of this down for you and impart to you a spirit of wisdom to give you that discernment to make sure that you don't swing too far left where you're having so much fun that you sin and you don't swing too far right where you don't have any fun and then you're religious because we want to go right where the discernment places us and only the spirit of wisdom gives us that discernment to not swing too far left or right, okay? Okay, so some Christians are very religious and they swing all the way right and they become religious. They become Pharisees in a lot of ways. Christians think that the only way to please Jesus is to pray alone and lock the door and read your Bible and lock yourself away for like four hours and then pray in tongues. That's the only way that you can ever possibly please God. But what does Jesus say? Jesus says that those that abide in me, I shall not cast out. The apostle Paul taught us and he wished over all things that we have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So it's not works that actually gets you intimacy with God. It's not actually the praying and the and the evangelism and all of these things and the casting out demons and that gets you close to Jesus. It's abiding in him and having fellowship with the Holy Spirit that increases your intimacy. So what does that look like? It means that every single thing that you do, you do it with Jesus. And it's really simple. Take a moment and invite the Holy Spirit into whatever activity you're doing. That way, you're praying without ceasing. You're always spending time with Jesus, not just when you're praying, but even when you're doing mundane things like washing the dishes and taking care of your kids and walking your dog. You wash the dishes with Jesus. You take care of your kids with Jesus. You walk your dog with Jesus. So that way you're in a constant form of prayer and it's a form of fellowship. That's what it means to abide in him. It means to rest in him. When you came into the kingdom of God, Jesus did not have you come into his house because he wants you to work. He did, because he on, you're, you, you only please him when you work. No, he's just happy you're in the house. He just wants to spend time with you. So start to um, really yield to the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Invite the Holy Spirit to do all things with you at all times. So, you know, this joy of repentance, this walk of repentance really just fills you with abundance. And, and then, you know, you become more productive. The Lord speaks to you in new ways. You know, you're, you're not just spending all of your time in a prayer closet but you're spending your time with your kids and you know getting things done and i don't know that's why i just have a really lovely relationship with jesus i'm at work with him right now so then even when you go to work with him it feels like you're not even working <laughs> let's go to the other side of the pendulum where christians will have so much fun that they sin Sin is not fun. Sin is not supposed to be your idea of fun as a Christian. And if it is your idea of fun, you're a child of Satan and you're lukewarm. Okay, so let's get that together right now. If you think things like getting drunk, flirting, lusting after women, objects, money, those things, if that's your idea of fun, yeah, you're lukewarm. So we got to get you right right now in Jesus name. Uh, things that are fun to Jesus is anything that's not sin anything that's not sin is a great time for jesus and you are allowed to do it okay so rock climbing it's fun fun good fun you know going on a boat swimming pottery you know olive oil tasting i went olive oil tasting that was the jam that was good wholesome fun okay that's fun going out to the club that's not fun that is we got to get you right. <laughs> so this is why reading your word is very important. The word will identify to you what is and what is not a sin. And it'll give you that discernment to stay away from things that are going to, you know, poison your mind and your heart and your anointing. Now, a big sin that a lot of Christians do that, and they don't know about is they have idols in, in their hearts. So idolatry is a sin. But what a lot of Christians don't know is that you can have an idol in your heart so if there is something in your life that you're not willing to give up, that would be classified as an idol. For example, when I first gave my life to Jesus, 
one of the idols in my life, one of the things that I worshipped was dance. Now, I was nervous about giving that up and the fact that I was clinging on to it made it an idol. So I had to let go of that idol and I, and I kept myself away from dancing and I put off all of my own selfish dreams about dancing um, in order to repent from that sin of idolatry, of idolizing you know, my own passions. So now that I've let it go, I have declared to Jesus that it's no longer an idol. And now I can dance freely because I'm not like unwilling to give it up. Um, and I don't compromise in the area of dance. You know, I don't go to heels, dancing workshops, chair dancing workshops, burlesque, nothing that's sexually compromised. Um, I do not dance lustfully with other people at the club. I'm a dance teacher. I teach kids how to dance. Um, I teach and learn wholesome dances, you know, nothing self gratifying or glorifying or anything like that. So now I can partake in the fun of dancing without being in sin. So every Christian, it's different on an individual level, but you have to take up all of your idols before God so that you don't fall into that very common trap of, you know, having an idol in your heart. So for any people out there that are not Christian and you don't want to be Christian because it doesn't look fun to you, as a Christian, I'm telling you, it's it's very fun. And I used to think the same way as you um, because I never met a funny Christian. And that's just a whole different thing in its own. That's the, like that's a whole different thing. Um, but when you do it right, when you do the Christian walk right, it's hilarious. It's fun. It's an adventure. I, my life has been nothing short of an adventure twists turns excitement joy uh, i don't know talking to jesus is the most enjoyable thing he's really really funny and that's a, a trait people don't really give to god enough because you know people don't a lot of christians you know they don't really know god that well <laughs> but I, I promise you when you read your word and you really just seek the lord oh my goodness he's hilarious like he has me busting up laughing all the time like me and my homegirls, like we just be laughing. Like I just be laughing. Like me and all my Christian friends, we just cannot stop laughing. I find everything funny. Like even when people are mean to me, like it's just funny. Like everything is funny. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> yeah, my Christian walk has been an adventure. Like an adventure. Like I, I, it's been, I, my life is so exciting. I have so much to look forward to. Like, I just see miracles and mysteries and um, yeah, it's nothing, it's nothing you're really going to understand until you get to the other side. That's kind of like, that's kind of like a challenge is I can't really explain it to you in a way that you're going to get because you're not going to get it until you're on the other side. But all I can tell you is that if you really actually give your life to Jesus, Jesus and seek him, you will not regret it. I do not regret it. I've never regretted it. He is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Hallelujah. So yeah, I hope this word helped somebody out there. And if you're a lukewarm Christian and you're very convicted about being lukewarm, I'm going to pray for you and give you some advice. Seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. He is not an it. Okay, the Holy Spirit is God. He is Jesus unlimited. Okay, so go into your word. Just look up the word Holy Spirit. Read every single scripture on the Holy Spirit and everything will make sense to you. Okay, I just released this anointing over your life and this impartation of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And I'm praying for you and I love you. God bless you guys and happy Wednesday.